journey. It seems only yesterday that I was up here in front of you for the very first time in September 2017, after the whirlwind that was Susan Frederick Gray's election to the UUA presidency, your loving farewell and congratulations to her and my own whirlwind journey across the plains and desert to serve as your interim minister in this transitional time. And it seems like just a blink of time since Anthony joined the staff last summer in the final stages of his own preparation for ministry, bringing his own special gifts to be part of the team here as you continued living into your vision and preparing for your future. There are many ways to think about a journey of transition. It's like sailing across an ocean from a place you've been settled in one land, across the open seas to find a welcoming harbor in another land, or crossing a desert, leaving the settled place you've known to cross the open sands, risking the unknown in your quest to discover the path to a new place where you can live. Or perhaps my favorite, the image of climbing a high tower and grasping a trapeze bar, swinging out into the sky, letting go of the bar to fly through the air, to catch a new bar so you can swing to your new high tower, the place of your future. As writer Danan Perry describes it, quote, I know that this new trapeze bar has my name on it. It's my next step, my growth, my aliveness coming to get me. In my heart of hearts, I know that for me to grow, I must release my grip on this present well-known bar to move to a new one. Each time it happens to me, I hope that I won't have to grab the new one, but I know that I must totally release my grasp on my old bar, and for some moment of time, I must hurtle across space before I can grab onto the new bar. Each time I am filled with terror. It doesn't matter that all my previous hurdles across the void of unknowing, I've always made it. Each time I'm afraid that I will miss, that I'll be crushed on unseen rocks in the bottomless chasm between the trapeze bars. But I do it anyway. And so I soar across the dark void of the past is gone, the future is not yet here. It's called transition. I've come to believe, says Dane and Perry, I've come to believe that this is the only place real change occurs, end quote. We have been journeying together in this time of transition through a place where real change occurs. Change. I love change. Change is good. Octavia Butler even says change is God. I say though the journey is about letting go of the past and grasping that future, today I choose to speak about the present. I am here. I am with you, and I will always be with you, whether in your past or in your future. But for sure, we have right now. I will miss you all and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for showing up and giving me all those big hugs and words of encouragement that I've received from this congregation. Thank you all. And thank you for the thought-provoking times, too. The times I had to pull hair out that I didn't have. <laughs> Those were wonderful times as well. They come with the territory. So as Margaret mentioned, I'm off to Northern California, and I'll be taking a part of Arizona with me. Many of you will travel with me as well. You know who you are. We have shared what I call that chakra food together. Eye contact is what feeds the, keeps the chakras hot. So many of you will travel with me as well, always, and I mean that always, and in all ways. I believe that when we come together as a community, for many reasons, 
the poet in me got to remind you of one thing, to find why do we come to this place? Why do we pick up kazoos and have fun? Why do we come to this place? I say, if we can't see it, we can't quantify it, we don't know how much it weighs or what color it is. I call it getting to know the invisible. That's why we come. It's invisible yet somehow known. You can hear it, it's a hard bass tone. Getting to know that unsmellable, the unroma locked in a cosmic jar. Getting to know the untastable, served at an all-you-can-eat energy bar. Getting to know the invisible means getting to know the only sense that cannot be described, it can only be felt. Talking about the unwheelable, the undealable, the unsealable. Yeah, I'm talking about the feelable. Now the invisible be coming and it be shooting ceaseless arrows, serving as a kind of memory hot toddy. These arrows usually hit you somewhere in the midsection of your body. Sometimes huge, sometimes slight in size. It's just the invisible touching base asking to be recognized. Getting to know the invisible means getting to trust your gut. Getting to know the invisible is the slice without the cut. Full loaf, body, mind, feeling, replacing fear with willing. Trust erases stealing. Love gets top belly. So welcome those ceaseless arrows. Welcome them into your soul. It's just the invisible calling, gifting you your gold. I look back with amazement on what has been done here in the past two years, what you've accomplished and what we've accomplished together. A couple of examples, this will tell you a lot about me. When I arrived, the board said they wanted to start using your new vision statement to set the goals, the strategic ends for your ministries and activities, but they had tried and they hadn't been able to come up with new strategic ends. They were a bit frustrated. They'd not been able to get that done. So wanting to be helpful, just a few weeks into my time here in the fall of 2017, we scheduled a board retreat and spent an intense Saturday crafting new strategic ends, defining how to live into being a congregation for our time, theologically diverse, radically inclusive, justice-centered. We then spent the rest of that year defining the processes and activities that would accomplish those ends. So this current program year has been the first time of really living into the promise of your amazing vision for this congregation. And a powerful and even challenging year it has been, not surprising, with such a powerful and compelling vision to live into. When I arrived, I learned that the leaders of the Capital Construction Committee also were frustrated that in spite of a great round of pledging the previous spring, they were still short of their goal to fully finance the construction and other activities of the Capital Project. So in my first months here, it was a busy fall, and in my first months here, we put together a second round capital campaign, bringing the total pledges for the capital campaign up to the goal of 1.5 million. That was big. The construction itself, as you may remember, finally began last December, and in spite of many unforeseen challenges, the patio is now on its way to completion. We have a wall and the paving of the west parking lot will follow close behind, and I learned a new word, caliche. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Who knew that in Arizona, rain seeping into the soil makes cement? <laughs> These past months have been an excedrin headache sort of time, as not only was the pounding excavation noise horrific, getting through the caliche, but the contractors broke at least one jackhammer before they finally completed the hard dig. So we have amazing caliche. 
And then there was the hammering and the drilling. I, people say, how was the last couple of weeks? And I say, well, then there, there first there was the and then there was the boom, boom. And the people tearing out ceilings and crawling around in the attic. An exciting time it has been. I've also learned so much from this congregation about what it means to live into a deep commitment be radically inclusive and justice-centered, as we've created multiple opportunities to shift our culture and perspective of white, heteronormative supremacy, as well as creating special Sundays several times each year to focus on undoing white supremacy. UUCP participated in funding Black Lives UU, raising over $4,000 this year in three Share the Plate collections, and so we met our part of the $1 million match to fund the programs of justice for people of color within our UU movement. Yay, you! We also created the inclusion team and engaged the Transforming Hearts Collective to come in and support this congregation in being truly inclusive of people of all gender identities transforming our understanding of human nature beyond the gender binary, and the journey continues. In this time, you've weathered a very challenging financial crisis and borne the sorrow of the beloved staff departing in each year I've been here. You've created new things, an updated employee handbook. You tell what gets me excited, right? An updated employee handbook that meets current HR standards, automation of many office processes, protocols for managing dangerous situations, including active shooters. You have empowered members of the congregation to lead and serve in deeper and wider ways. And yes, you have searched for and called the Reverend Christine Dance, an amazing partner for you as you move into your unfolding future. Yes, my friends, this has been a journey. Journey, journey, journey. Yes, 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 it has been. You know, when I first showed up and I saw those big old signs out there, theologically, justice, radical inclusion. Hmm. Uh, you lived up to it from, from my point of view. We've given it a shot. And it has been a joy to dance with most of y'all, those of y'all who have participated and those who have not. But the elements of that journey of trying to bring those words from that paper to reality. So I just want to give my shout out and thanks to, let me start out with Future Masculine, the men. Can I give y'all, can give yourself a hand? Men who have uh, been coming together once a month to talk about what it means to be a man in the 21st century recognizing the masculine and the feminine that resides in, in every soul. Another element for me, for me has been the Racial Justice Collaborative. Uh, we used to call it the Racial Justice Task Force, but in my simple head, it, it sounded like guns and stuff. Task Force. So we said, no, no, let's, let's make it sound like where we want to go. A Racial Justice Collaborative. And so we took that on, and my thanks to all of you who have participated in that dance and those who will continue to do so. And Lauren, then their spiritual practices. Yeah. We, we've, that's been such a joy to sit in the sanctuary on Thursday evenings every now and then with a group of folks circled up, 10 or 12 or however many, and to look at each other and talk about what does it mean the word spiritual practice in your life and to hold each other accountable about how's that going, how's that been. <laughs> so those are the ones that come up. Then there's the Advancing Justice Council. Those folks that are always in the back at the tables and the others who are sprinkled in the congregation. Our activists, those who show up, try to get us to sign up, to be civically active, to be earth-centered, beyond our creed, 
holding us to be accountable to our deeds. How are we showing up? So my thanks to, I'm going to just call them Susan and Paisley and Sandy and the gang and all the rest of them, Lauren, Laurel, I'm going to miss them, but it's been a joy to watch y'all do what you do, and y'all should be very proud to have folks like that walking the talk. And last but not least, the love curriculum, which I had the joy of co-creating with one Janine Gelsinger of living our vision every day. And we're happy to say that that has been teed up and is ready for Reverend Christine and for all of you to continue. Alutua continue. Yeah, the journey continues. Thank you. For me, ministry is about the people and the love. Always the people, the connection, the shared experience, the shared commitment, and all of you here have been the heart of the journey for me. The beautiful children, the wise and witty elders, those who make music, those who think deep thoughts, those who have been here for decades, and those who enter in wonderment for the first time, finding here a spiritual home that they thought could not exist. Those with long memories who remind us how it always has been, and those who welcome the risks of change, those who are curious, those who complain, those who expound, it's always about the people. And for me, what I have most gained as we have flown together through this open-ended space of transition is the love I will carry with me from our time on this journey, this time we have spent so well together in this piece of blessed earth in Paradise Valley. And my heart sings, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let me give Margaret a shout out loud for reaching out and plucking me up, tapping me on my shoulder, and inviting me down to this part of Arizona. Thank you out loud, no problem. So I have a poem that I want you to remember me by, and it's kind of self-descriptive as well. It's, it's entitled Sinner in winter. I am a sinner in winter, a wannabe angel, Jan, in fall. I'm falling free form, shaped like a snowflake floating like a dream. See, I'm dreaming of a place with no race, eyes open, heart, no face. Facing a wall of red stone, always climbing on ancestor bones. Bone, 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 boning up on Babel, masquerading as truth, so full of contempt. Hmm. You too, nobody's exempt. Hmm. Falling free from, shaped like a snowflake, floating like a dream. Dreaming of a place with no race, heart open, eyes with no face facing that wall of red stone, climbing on top of ancestral bone. <sighs> Masquerading is true. It's always so full of contempt. I'm a sinner in winter. You too. Once again, nobody's exempt. Ah, but spring will arrive when winter crumbles, leaving traces of what will come. Things and beliefs we thought were so real, turn out to be bubble gum. In a wrapper, dress oh so dapper, mimicking the original call. Me, I'm just a sinner and winner, a wannabe angel in fall. Thank you all so much.
time up here together with our gratitudes for all those who have made our time here joyful, productive, learningful, and fun. Let me start with all the, the UUCP staff, Benji, Katie, Rose, Bob, and Laura, and Manuel, and Belinda, as well as all of you who care for the children and help take care of us all. Thank you, thank you. The board and the nominating committee and the foundation board members, all those who have been elected to lead and to serve and who serve with such grace and love. And of course, as the choir. <laughs> and all the musicians that have performed here, all the ushers, and to the worship associates. Thank you. And all those who invest their time to work in the office and the property, the people who are here taking time off work to string Ethernet cable, <laughs> all the teachers and facilitators and mentors, the team and committee and group leaders, thanks to you all. You are the ones who make this place run. And of course, and of course all, all of you. Thank you so much. And now as we sail together through the universe, living into the powerful vision of this Unitarian Universalist faith movement, and this amazing congregation, this Unitarian Universalist congregation of Phoenix. Let us rise in body or spirit to sing our closing hymn, number 1064. You knew we had to sing Blue Boat Home, Blue right? Boat home. Blue Boat Home. <laughs> On this blue boat that is our home, we give thanks now and always to the waves upholding us, to the great winds that urge us on. We greet the infinite sea of possibility as we sing to the sky our sailor's song. This wide universe is the ocean, the mountains, the desert we travel, and UUCP is our amazing home. May the blessings of the journey be ours, now and always. So may it be. Amen. And blessed be. And now, let us join in our chalice extinguishing as Tara extinguishes the chalice. The words are in your order of service. We extinguish the chalice here, that it might flow gently in our hearts, and may it light our path as we leave this place. May it guide our way until we are together again. We go in peace and love. Amen. And blessed be. Thank you.